Hello, everyone. Welcome to Interpret and Tradition. This is another chat, as um, you may or may not know. If you're new, you don't know that in this channel, I'm doing several readings on Catholic uh, books, the Divine Mysteries of the Sacrifice of the Mass, and then books on mysticism and other things. And about two weeks ago, I decided to um, have a little break and uh, just chat to you about whatever comes to my mind, or not quite exactly, perhaps something that is on my mind, didn't just appear, but um, it was influenced by something that I read, or something that I hear, or something that I watch, and that provokes certain thoughts and since, as I said in the previous chat, since I am in my 70s and um, as a person of advanced age, uh, an old woman, we have more um, memories than we have hopes, perhaps, in quantity at least. Um, I sort of reminisce about uh, the world that I lived in, I grew up in as a child, as an adolescent, and um, just sort of talk about it. And that takes me inevitably, obviously, because I am looking back, it takes me to my childhood and my adolescence. And I don't want to belabor the point that um, I was uh, raised in an orphanage and all that because I don't want to sort of dwell on it, but inevitably it takes me back uh, since I'm talking about comparing and so on, talking about my childhood and things. Today, my thought was that I received a few comments from children, from young people actually, and I thought, well, and I thought perhaps I would tell them more stories about because they asked me about my life there in the orphanage and this and that and so on and perhaps I, I thought I'll tell them a few sort of funny stories to to the to children to the children who write to me, but then I. I heard something I saw things about the problems that we are experiencing in the Catholic Church these days and what is going on with the Mass and uh, and the Pope and all these problems that we are having. And I thought I would talk about that a little bit. And this is obviously, look, I'm not a scholar and I'm not a theologian and I'm obviously not a priest. I'm, 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 I'm a retired teacher. Um, but uh, I just want to say a few words about this. I tend to speak rather slowly, so perhaps you'll have to put me on double the, the speed, but I, I cannot go any 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 faster because I'm thinking about it and and I'm also speaking in a language that is not my natural language, so um, just just speed it up. <laughs> Otherwise it will tire you. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking today. Um, I, I saw one or two videos about what is going on in the Anglican Church, in the Church of England. And uh, there are some problems there because they, are, they have done it or they're going to do something, I don't know exactly, um, about incorporating, um, let's say, woke things, okay, that are causing a lot of anguish in our Anglican brothers and sisters and so on. And um, and I was thinking, you know, what is the Catholic Church doing? What is, because they can't come to us because we're having exactly the same problems. Some bishops or theologians trying to change or just push down our throats what they did in the 60s. Let me talk about the what happened during the uh, 60s. 
say what in Protestant countries we are called cradle Catholics, which doesn't make a lot of sense in Catholic countries, but that is what we are called. Anyway, a person who was raised by nuns uh, in the Catholic Church. The changes that were made in the 60s were so profound that we didn't know what was happening. They were made without telling us about it, without preparation, without catechesis, nothing. One day we were going to church and in the old tradition when you went to church Christ was there in silence, you knelt down, um, respect, reverence, and from one day to the next, it seemed, everything changed. They didn't tell us why. All of a sudden, there were women there, you know practically showing their breasts, giving communion. What, 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 what is this? The, the whole attitude during the Mass was changed. All of a sudden, the priest was facing us. The emphasis was on, um, you know, we are here together, you know, we are together, all this togetherness. Whereas before it was not about us, it was about God who was there, hence the silence and the reverence. I heard since then that the, the idea was to um, open up the window in order to get some fresh air, all these rituals and these genuflections and the, all these reverence and Latin and the let, let open the window, let some fresh air in. The problem is that they they opened the window so far that everything blew away. I think that 80% of Catholics left the church. Not so much out of rebellion, many of them, but out of, we were shocked. We just drifted out. We didn't know what was happening. Looking back, I think, that they almost violated our innocence. It was like a child seeing a grown-up naked or something. It just, what is happening? And we didn't understand and they didn't even try to explain it. They just forced it down. I believe it was an abuse of our obedience to the church. I, they abused us, that's how I feel, and the wound is still open. When I talk about wound is, um, the obedience was due to the fact that, again, we carried that wound, that wound from the Reformation. We felt that our brothers and sisters left. Some of, some of them derided us, the church, and some of them even hated it. It still continued. And we see them, I see them still, for example, the Church of England or the Anglicans, um, I see them as my brothers there who, who don't want to acknowledge. I want to bring them home, but I can't. It's like saying, you know, we, we, we came from the same womb, you know. I know you probably left because we had problems and the church is always having problems. I mean, think back to its history, the human side of the church is always going to to have problems basically because in the in the 
Middle Ages or in, during the Reformation. Perhaps the popes just before they had been, I don't know, drunk with power, which is what happens in every human institution. Not the divine, but the human, the Catholic Church representing mankind. Uh, you're going to find the very best and the very worst of mankind. And we do have the very worst, I think, also. And uh, so we, we felt abandoned. And we drifted out, we just didn't know. It's like a mother who disappears. And there you are, you have to, I don't, you don't know what's happening. I drifted out, for sure. And uh, now I see that they're doing it again. Uh, these um, bishops or whoever they are, you know, the Germans, in the synod of synodality, whatever that is. I mean, they're just trying to do the same, the same thing to the Catholic Church, to accept things that the Anglican Church is, is, is uh, struggling with. Um, and they're pushing it. So the Catholic Church is no response to the Anglican Church because we are dealing with the same problems. The only difference is that I believe, I really do, that the Catholic Church will not die. First, well, I know that the answer is because its founder was not a king or a theologian or a priest or a, or a monk, but Jesus Christ himself. And I, I don't think he's going to, I know he's not going to let it die, but it will perhaps in order to... Um, to clean us and uh, to, to do away with all the dead wood, as it were, in our soul, might have to, we might have to go, to go back to the catacombs, as, as some people say. But it will not die. It will, it will be like a fountain spring that renews itself and takes out whatever should not be there. And it will grow again anew. So I don't think it will die. I don't even think that the next Pope will be a better one. It will probably, it might be even a worse one than the one we have at the moment. Because I don't think they're done yet. I think that, I really think that they're trying to destroy it. Um, this is always a, a problem. Why did I say Germans? I don't know, because it just seems that it is these people from the woods of Germania that are always there, sort of pricking at the Catholic Church. They trying to destroy it. I think so. I think they know what they're doing. I don't think now it's done in good faith. In... Uh, in Vatican II, they may have uh, been some in, in good faith, thinking that um, this was a good thing to modernize it and so on. We all make those mistakes of thinking that progress is always good, even if it has no direction. But uh, I think that some of them knew exactly what they're doing, which is the same ones in power now that they they know what they're doing the pope i don't know i i, I just don't know what is happening there he's an argentinian i think he knows the difference he's trying as far as I can hear and I can see, I, I, I hope I'm not exaggerating, but it seems that he's trying to practically do away with the, the mass of the ages, the mass that was said from the time of the apostles to the 1960s. Now, I know some of you will say, no, 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 there have been many changes. There have been many changes 
only yes there had been a Mozarabic rite in Spain there had been the uh, the mass of Saint Basil and the mass of the but they were all kind of the same thing one pope incorporated this prayer there or they might have changed the this and that but they didn't change doctrine they didn't change dogma it was in an attempt to unify all these different masses that they were saying they were all doing the same thing perhaps in a different way but it was all the same doctrine and it was all about the sacrifice of the mass um, so this this the mass as it was was from from the very beginning and for example at the beginning of the mass before the um, before the uh, priest went up to the altar um, in the beginning they would recite all of the psalms well that was changed and it was a summary of, of uh, the psalms and, and so on so changes were made indubitably but the mass was the mass always what changed at vatican II was the I believe it was doctrine because the liturgy is living doctrine. Um, we used to have a mass where it was a very Jewish, if you think about it, the liturgy of the Catholic Church before the 1960s. Uh, you went into the church and you had this, uh, you know, God forgive me kind of thing. Him there, us here crawling on the ground and the genuflections and the, and the striking of the breast and all this. The, the, the disposition, the attitude was very different. So was the reverence. So was the silence. Um, this was all change they did with they did out with, with with a lot of things for example instead of uh, the trinity the universal god well universal god it's okay we understand it god is universal okay so no one said anything it sounded good enough but we left it with this fog there because once you say something universal then it could be a he then it could be a she then it could be some sort of amphibian something i mean in other words they 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 took out the the core of the thing and left it in a generality and so on also the the as i said the attitude they they changed big things but also tiny little things which are not important, but they are important. Um, for example, uh, why in Catholic countries you normally have a, a, a saint or something in each province or each town or whatever, they will have a patron saint for whatever reason, you know. Um, in, in Galicia, where I'm from, uh, Compostela, for example, it, it was uh, St. Martin. Why? Because it was St. Martin that came and during pagan times to, to teach the gospel and so on. Anyway, St. Martin is the patron saint. Well, the obvious one that you will know, Avila, yes, St. Teresa of Avila. And so they even went to the exchange of change in the same days. So Saint uh, Saint Teresa was changed from October or November, I don't know when, to February. Why? Well, it's not important, but it was to throw fog. I believe that it was to distract. It was to minimize. The people of Avila didn't take any notice. I mean, <laughs> they continue with uh, their own this day but this is I know it's unimportant but what I am saying is that the changes they knew what they were doing the beginning of the destruction of the Catholic Church which started really at the beginning of the century why did they change the Again, little things. Why did they change the Kyrie? Okay, so, okay, in, in the vernacular, fine. All right. Why say it once instead of three times? 
why say domino non sum dignus substentrum? Yes, all that. Uh, why once and not three times? What was the reason for the three times? It was the Trinity. The Trinity, the three persons acted on the incarnation. Only the second incarnated, but you're continuously reminded of the Trinity. Why did they change the uh, vestments, for example? The vestments had a meaning, a mystical meaning. The chasuble, for example, the last of the ornamental vestments. Originally from the Old Testament, originally divided in two, but made into one at the shoulders signifying both peoples, the Jewish people and the Gentiles. Together at the shoulders, one day from these two parts, it will become one. Or the people who came before the incarnation and after the incarnation, the holy prophets and then the magisterium. All that two parts of one vestment shone into one. Everything had a meaning. Those who agreed to it probably did not know that meaning. But a lot of them did. And they did away with that. I won't go into all the mysteries of the Mass. Only that I say it was what they did away with was the Jewishness of Christianity. They did away with all that. They sanitized it. No, 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 no. That's too easy. So you have a mass which is very Northern European. They do not understand how important the Jewish tradition and the Jewish sentiment and the Jewish approach to God that was that was shown there in the Catholic Mass. They did away with that. You can't take it out. That was the old law that instructed the new. The sacrifice was different. That is why it was new. The new law. But in the feeling and the reverence it was Jewish. They did away with the Jewishness. And it became a sort of a Northern European understanding. Well, the Northern Europeans were catechized, first of all, by the Arians, a heresy. And there they still are, trying to make more changes. And the Pope is going along with it. And I don't understand it. I, I said before he's Argentinian. I think he knows what the Catholic Mass was. And he was obviously brought up with it. I don't know whether this is too much to say or go too far, but... He seems to hate the the mass, the, the traditional mass. Perhaps I'm going too far with this, but all the things that he says and he does, he's trying to do away with. And I can see it in his face, you know. He's not a happy man. 
I'll just go out on a limb now and I'll tell you exactly what, uh, what I think. Perhaps the FBI will come back to me. <laughs> I think he knows the difference, but uh, he decided to to go against it. I, I, he seems always so angry. I think his conscience is gnawing at him. I think he's know what he knows what he's doing. Being Argentinian, perhaps in the 60s, with the, good, the best intention in the world, he, um, I don't know this, but I imagine that he became part of this uh, liberation theology, you know, the poor and so on. Well, the Catholic Church was always, always had um, an eye to the poor. They didn't, they didn't need to change the liturgy to help the poor. But now he's um, doing all these terrible things. And um, because, as I said at the beginning, in the Catholic psychic, we have this thing about obeying the Vatican and obeying the Pope. They're abusing this. And those of us who want to uh, hear the Masses, as the mass, the real mass, we are practically, <laughs> I think he wants us to leave. I don't think his problem is that we want to leave. I think he just wants, that, uh, wants us out. But the Catholic Church will not die. We'll have to just uh, keep going. And um, if the next Pope is worse, Eventually, one will come which will restore the meaning of the Mass and the meaning of the liturgy. And the bishops and the cardinals and the archbishops, uh, what are they doing? Well, one or two, the rest are hiding under the bed, nothing. It's like, um, you know, politicians, you know. Uh, worried more about their career, I suppose. Absurd. So, I don't know where, where I'm going with this. I think I'll stop because my heart is, is, uh, is, is bleeding with pain about what the, this Pope is doing to the Church because of the bishops who are saying nothing. Some of them are basically, uh, they know exactly what they're doing. I mentioned the vestments. I saw in a video in America, a priest who turned up to say mass there at the altar and he's wearing uh, the, uh, on the written on the, uh, vestment that he's wearing, whatever that is, uh, the name of a football team. <laughs> he is there, a priest is there. The meaning of priest is the one who sacrifices. He's there in a Catholic mass, the priest is representing Christ. Do you think that Christ would go to the cross with a vestment, with a, the name of a football team or a whatever? There is another video of a, a gang in America of a priest and he has the telephone on the altar and he's checking the telephone. Do you think that Christ would be there at the cross checking the newspapers? The liturgy of the Catholic Church is for us to go into church in silence and worship God. And we're going to have the passion of Christ recreated. This is not a place 
for us to get together and uh, sing Kumbaya. You want to meet your neighbors and your friends and, and uh, you know, see how much you love each other. Go to the park or do a, have a barbecue in your garden. The church is not for that. The church is there for you and for us to beg God forgiveness. So, since the sixties, since the sixties, they I don't know what they taught them at the seminary, but we are seeing the fruits. Whatever they always say, well, the spirit of Vatican II and so on. Well, what they thought. Look at what has happened. By their fruits, you will know them. And what is happening? In a time in the world when I think in the West we are suffering this moral degeneration and decadence. The church should be out guiding, teaching, and instead they're saying, oh, we are like you, you know, they're, it's, it's like, imagine, I'm old, okay? Imagine a grandmother who wants to, in order to speak to her grandchildren, she thinks that the best way to do it is to dye your hair purple and to put piercing earrings in your nose and to wear a short uh, leather miniskirt to talk to your grandchildren. Do you think that, that is honorable? You're a grandmother. You, you, you dress like a grandmother. You wear grandmother's clothes. You, you wear grandmother's slippers, you know. It's not by dressing like the young that you're going to attract them. They will disparage you because your grandma, you're not supposed to be like that. They will come to you, they'll grow up, and then they realize that perhaps, um, you know, even though they thought you were stupid because you can't use the internet, you know, <laughs> nevertheless, when they grow up, they say, well, my grandma, you know, she might know a thing or two, you know. So the church should not be adapting itself to everything that people think of and to be modern and to be progressive and all these things. It should be there as a column, as a foundation. You know, when you change your house, you, change, you can redecorate and put this chair there and change the wallpaper and so on, but the foundation has to remain the same. And they're changing the foundation, they're just not changing the pictures on the walls. Well, I, I don't think that is going to die. I think we have quite a few priests now that um, young people who are attracted to the mystery of the Catholic Mass and who are coming to it. And we have young priests who are learning it. The tradition was broken. I'm so grateful to them. Actually, you know, sometimes when I see them, I can see that they, they do a great job. They, they, they celebrate the Mass very well. Um, but since I remember how it was, you know, I see a few tiny little things. <laughs> Uh, with the young priests. I love them and thank you for doing it, continuing the tradition, but I see a few little things, you know, I'm just nitpicking really here. The hands, the hands are usually with, let me see if I can uh, show them in the can, but how am I? Okay, the hands uh, in some are usually a problem, okay? Uh, the hands, when you say Dominus Vobiscum is not supposed to be like this, or, you know, it's, 
it was it was a sort of a I, I can't I can't do it in the case. I don't know okay and the cadence of the body too when you turn round okay to say dominus what don't do it too fast there is a sort of a cadence there a rhythm but never mind I'm just nitpicking like your grandma <laughs> um, you you you're doing it all very very well anyway so uh I don't know what will happen but um I I think we have to pray to God that he may be good enough to gaze at his church and see the mess that not the faithful but its leaders are creating and uh, I'm sure he knows what he's doing, so perhaps it will all be for the good of the church. I hope so. Well, anyway, that's it. This is not a very happy... <laughs> I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.